I have said, look about you. I want you to continue the work and look about at your own closets. Oh, brethren and sisters, there is no place that some of us need to be so much ashamed to look at as our own closet door. I cannot say the hinges are rusty. They do open and shut at their appointed seasons. I cannot say that the door is locked and cobwebbed. We do not neglect prayer itself. But those walls, those beams out of the wall, what a tale they might tell! Oh, the wall might cry out, I have heard thee when thou hast been in so vast a hurry that thou couldst scarcely spend two minutes with thy God. And I have heard thee, too, when thou wast neither asleep nor awake, and without it's not know what thou wast saying. Then one beam might cry out, I have heard thee come and spend ten minutes and not ask for anything. At least thy heart did not ask, or thy lips moved, but the heart was silent. How might another beam cry out, Oh, I have heard thee groan out thy soul, but I have seen thee go away, distrustful, not believing thy prayer was heard, quoting the promise, but not thinking God would fulfill it. Surely the four walls of the closet might come together and fall down upon us in their anger, because we have so often insulted God with our unbelief and with our hurry, with all manner of sins. We have insulted Him even at His mercy seat, on the spot where His condescension is most fully manifested. Is it not so with you? Must we not each confess it in our own turn? See to it then, Christian brethren, that an amendment be made, and God make you more mighty and more successful in your prayers than heretofore. But not to detain you, the last point is, Look upward, look above, look above, Christian brethren and sisters, and let us weep. O oh God, Thou hast given us a mighty weapon, and we have permitted it to rust. Thou hast given us that which is mighty as Thyself, and we have let that power lie dormant. Would it not be a vile crime if a man had an eye given him which he would not open, or a hand that he would not lift up? or a foot that grew stiff because he would not use it? And what must we say of ourselves when God has given us power in prayer, matchless power, full of blessedness to ourselves and of unnumbered mercies to others, and yet that power lies still? Oh, if the universe was as still as we are, where should we be? Oh, God, Thou givest light to the sun, and He shines with it, Thou givest light even to the stars, and they twinkle. To the winds thou givest force, and they blow. And to the air thou givest life, and it moves, and men breathe thereof. But to thy people thou hast given a gift that is better than force, and life, and light. And yet they permit it to lie still. Forgetful almost that they wield the power, seldom exercising it though it would be blessed to countless myriads. Weep, Christian man. Constantine, the emperor of Rome, saw that on the coins of other emperors their images were in an erect posture, triumphing. Instead thereof, he ordered that his image should be struck kneeling. For, said he, that is the way in which I have triumphed. We shall never triumph till our image is struck kneeling. The reason why we have been defeated, and why our banners trail in the dust, is because we have not prayed. Go, go ye back to your God with sorrow. Confess before him, ye children of Ephraim, that ye were armed and carried bows, but turned your backs in the day of battle. Go to your God, and tell him that if souls are not saved, it is not because he has not power to save but because you have never travailed, as it were, in birth for perishing sinners. Your bowels have not sounded like a harp for Kir Haresh, neither has your spirit been moved because of the defenses of the tribe of Reuben. Wake up! Wake up, ye people of Israel! Be astonished, ye careless ones, ye who have neglected prayer, 
ye sinners that are in Zion's own self, and that have been at ease. Wake up yourselves, wrestle and strive with your God, and then the blessing shall come, the early and the latter rain of His mercy, and the earth shall bring forth plenteously, and all the nations shall call Him blessed. Look up, then, and weep. Once more, look up and rejoice. Though you have sinned against Him, He loves you still. Ye have not prayed unto Him, nor sought His face. But behold, He cries to you still, Seek ye my face. And He saith not, Seek ye me in vain. Ye may not have gone to the fountain, but it flows as freely as before. Ye have shut your eye to that sun, but it still shines upon you with all its luster. Ye have not drawn near to God, but He waiteth to be gracious still, and is ready to hear all your petitions. Behold, He says unto you, Enquire of me concerning things to come, and concerning my sons and daughters, command ye me. What a blessed thing it is that the Master in heaven is always ready to hear. Augustine has a very beautiful thought upon the parable of the man who knocked at his friend's door at midnight, saying, Friend, give me three loaves. His paraphrase of it runs something like this. I knock at mercy's door, and it is the dead of night. Will not some of the servants of the house come and answer me? No. I knock, but they are asleep. O oh, ye apostles of God, ye glorified martyrs, ye are asleep. Ye rest in your beds, ye cannot hear my prayer. But will not the children answer? Are there not children who are ready to come and open the door to their brother? No, they are asleep. My brethren that have departed, with whom I took sweet counsel, and who were the companions of my heart, ye cannot answer me, for ye rest in Jesus. Your works do follow you, but ye cannot work for me. But while the servants are asleep, and while the children cannot answer, the Master is awake, awake at midnight too. It may be midnight with my soul, but He hears me, and when I am saying, Give me three loaves, He comes to the door and giveth me as much as I need. Christian, look up then and rejoice. There is always an open ear if you have an open mouth. There is always a ready hand, if you have a ready heart. You have but to cry, and the Lord hears. Nay, before you call, He will answer, and while you are speaking, He will hear. Oh, be not backward then in prayer. Go to Him when you reach your home. Nay, on the very way, lift up your heart silently. And whatever your petition or request may be, ask it in Jesus' name and it shall be done unto you.